Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love and today I want to share a new art supply bundle with you. As an artist, discovering new and exciting supplies is always a thrill. Recently I got my hands on some more unique art supplies that I'm excited to share with you in my latest video. So I just wanted to show you my latest art haul and I know I just did an art haul video recently so let's just say I'm addicted to art supplies and every time I see the next shiny new thing I can't wait to try it out and get it and I have just a plethora of things that I saved to show you guys before I um, separate it all out and start using it. Um, I got a really fun thing from a friend of mine who gave it to me as a gift um, which how awesome is that when you have friends that are like Ooh, look at this new thing you've never seen and I've never seen this before this is Windsor and Newton watercolor granulation medium and the reason why this is so exciting to me is because my very favorite thing with watercolors is the texture the separation when you add water on it the uh, the different ways that some of it granulates differently than other and now I can make it all granulate so super fun and I wanted to tell you about this in case you too love granulating watercolor and didn't know this existed and it says on the back for maximum effect dilute the color generously with medium alone and always work with painting horizontal so it sounds like we use this to wet the watercolor or maybe have wet watercolor and add some medium in and then paint horizontally. Now I can't guarantee I'm going to always paint horizontally but it's going to be very fun just to see what kind of effects these do and so I'm definitely going to have to do a video real soon on playing with that medium. So if you didn't know that was out there either, how cool is that? <laughs> Another thing I recently got um, that I think is going to be really fun to play with is the Color Meditation Deck by Lisa Solomon. How cool is this little box? And check it out. Inside the little box is a little book that kind of talks about what's in here and lots of little prompt cards that give you some ideas for your painting. So you could pick two or three cards if you're stuck and you're like I don't know what to do today I want to experiment I want to step outside my box you could pick like two or three cards art prompt cards and flip it over read the prompt on there and then create and just see what you come up with that day some of my best creating has come when I've limited myself to a few supplies and I've said okay what are we going to create today and maybe I want to focus on color or size or shape or fast versus going slow you can see how these could be real fun you're your most creative sometimes when you give yourself parameters and limitations and then you're like okay here's what I'm limited to what can I make so this is super exciting to me I have made art prompt cards um, and I have a little class on making your own art prompt cards with lots of ideas so this speaks to me as far as different prompts that I may not have thought of you could randomly come in here and pick three cards and say okay here's what I'm creating with today and it just seems super fun I order from a lot of a lot of companies but I really like the unique items that the St. Louis company sends and after I had gotten that last order in I went back and got the other thing that I had been drooling about and so ha 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 can't wait to use some of this let me just pull this out and I'll put the box away um, so I went ahead and ordered myself the 24 color set of the Kuretake watercolors and these are really beautiful colors um, I think this might have said like the Art Nouveau set online which I love Art Nouveau but I could be making that up in my mind that I remembered that from something else that I read who knows this is the 24 color set and what's cool about these and I'm excited to kind of experiment with them is these say they're kind of a mix between watercolor and gouache so they're a little more solid than watercolor they're not going to be as translucent um, but maybe they're not as thick as a gouache so I'm actually pretty excited about the colors in here um, this and this 
um, these greens and the blues look very interesting. The oranges and the pinks. So I can, I'm just, I'm looking forward to playing in those. I thought that was really cool. And I thought I would share that with you. If you've not tried the Japanese watercolors, these would be um, something fun to experiment in. And I also got a really pretty um, watercolor brush here. And this super fun is a package from the stencil girl I went looking I've all of a sudden kind of gotten back into some of my stencils that I love and I thought I need some more so I just went on a little stencil buying haul trip because I like organic shapes and patterns and things that I could overlay on top of a background and get some really interesting organic looking shapes and sizes and some of these smaller mark making pieces are going to be super fun because they've got new things um, since the last time I had been on their site looking and I love all the yummy options. <gasps> this I think is going to be one of my favorite because I like little hash marks. I thought I would show you some of the yummy fun stencils. This is uh, these cut out and it makes a big square. Um, I just thought that might be fun to sometimes um, mark stuff up to perhaps make a sheet of mark making and stuff. I don't know what I'll do with it. We'll see. <gasps> Look at that. How fun that is. Super fun. And some random marks. So if you haven't been on their website lately to see some of the new fun goodies, uh, go ahead and check them out. I really think I'm going to love this one with the different sized marks and interest there. Um, so they got some fun stuff. So these are going to be showing up in near future stuff. Looking forward to that. And then I thought I would mention just in case you don't use um, hardboard panels. I love hardboard panels. I have a whole bunch of them. I got these um, these brown ones I got at the art store and I got two of them and it's like the perfect size to do two two of these uh, 9 by 12s like cut in half which is a size I like to work on a lot of times it's the very perfect size for taping two down and then being able to move it off your work surface to do other stuff with and these were a little more expensive at the art store. Um, I got some of these from Amazon for $10.95. They were 11 bucks, 11 by 14. And I think at the art store it might have been a couple dollars more. So I'm actually looking forward to having some extra hardboard panels to use as my painting surfaces that I can then put aside and let dry overnight. Um, so those are really fun. If you take things down to your surface and you're thinking, oh, I wish I could move that around. Uh, hardboard panels, uh, hardboard art panel is what I looked for when I Googled these. You might just kind of look and see what's the best pricing and get a couple in a size that is a size paper that you like to work on. And then you can move these around without damaging your piece before they're dry. So these are fun to work on. Super excited about today's haul. I thought I would do a little abstract demo with the watercolors and see what they look like. So let me clear my table off and I'll be right back. Okay, I've wet these down a little bit with my spray water bottle just to activate them. And I'm gonna use one of my bamboo brushes that I got in my last art haul because I wanna make some ethereal looking landscapes and I'm just going to give these a little try out to see what we end up with and I've got some extra pieces of watercolor paper here just so that I can ooh, look at that look at that <laughs> just so I can kind of look at what these colors are so I'd highly recommend as soon as you get something like this swatch these colors out and see what what do they look like what are they going to do for you when you go to use them uh, because some of these look drastically different even than in my mind i was thinking because they are um, a little more solid a little bit different there in the ooh, that one's super bright that's kind of like a green gold um, they look a little tiny bit different than a regular watercolor and you're going to want to 
know what they do before you get all this working on your paper. Okay, so looking at some of these colors. Ooh, I like that one there. Um, so I think one of the first things I'm going to do after this is do a little swatch thing so that I can just have this with it. So what if, so we could do like a pretty uh, pinks and purpley kind of ethereal looking watercolor, which I'm kind of feeling pinks and purplies. So why not, let's just dive right in. I'm going to just start with this one. I like this bamboo brush because it gives you a very uneven kind of different look and feel to the way you put it on. Like, look at that. It already looks a little bit magical because I've done this kind of uneven. And I'm going to just do a little pair here. We could do it in two different ones to really test out and play with our colors, but eh, let's just do it. Let's just do a little pair because I love them. They're so pretty. All right, let's just come back with a different color. Oh, so pretty. I love these. We could let the colors dry in between the layers if we didn't want them to blend, if we wanted to sit right on top of each other. But look, look how pretty these are. I could use my heat gun and dry it a little bit if I wanted to. Let's try this pink in there as a little pop of so ooh, ooh, look at that. <laughs> These are so pretty. Oh my gosh. They are a little more matte and there's a little more, um, I don't know, definition or depth or I don't know. It's just different than say a Daniel Smith color. It's completely a different look and I'm kind of digging that. Let's go down here to this little taupey color and just pull in a tiny bit of a contrasty in here because why not? <laughs> okay, so I'm actually going to let this dry a bit. And then what if we use some stencils out there? Let's just move some color around a little bit up top. Maybe do this lighter color up there with more water. Just something light to imply there's a sky up there. And then too, you know, while we're still going, let's let's not stop here. Let's go ahead and see. Oh, look at that. We can reactivate it. Oh my gosh, look at this. Now we're going to get some super interesting texture here in our landscape. Um, I always love bits of texture. Oh, look at these. And what if we took a little bit of salt? Just kind of salted these a tiny bit for some texture. Oh yeah, check it out. Okay, and we're gonna let this completely dry and then I'll be back. All right, our pieces are dry. Let's go ahead and um, remove our salt. And a lot of people, you just scrub it with your fingers, but I have discovered especially using bigger chunks because these are a little bit larger sea salt chunks that if you just have like an old credit card you can just scrape them right off and then you can put them right back into your container and just use them again um, if you want to keep your salt pure then you might not do that but I figure I'm already adding texture and color and bits why not just see if I get little surprises and if I don't want the little surprise of color I can just pick out the clean salt um, to use but I also like doing this because I used to kind of push this off into the trash can and I'm like oh what a waste of my salt that I'm just using in art and now I can just put the salt back in the container <laughs> so some kind of old gift card or credit card perfect way to get your salt off of your piece look at the texture in that watercolor i'm telling you this is what i look for and why not we why don't we just take a few of our uh, stencils and a little bit of paint and go ahead and just finish these off with some other things that maybe we already have that would give a good finish but i want to try out a stencil and i'm 
kind of interested in this yummy stencil so I'm looking at it thinking is there something that I could do with that um, to make it interesting now if I use this I am going to be putting large quantities of color on top so this might not be the perfect piece for that but maybe I like the little hash mark one and I could put some yummy hash marks into our design so I am kind of feeling that and then I also I also am kind of feeling um, some circles but I don't have any little tiny punchinella circles here in this but I am kind of feeling like it's a possibility or I could just step outside Ooh, look at that maybe I like this one better or I could just step outside my comfort zone and make myself use a different shape hmm I need you to vote I need you to hit the vote button which way do we want to go <laughs> All right, let's just, uh, ooh. see now I could do a little hash and then those, let's just do those two. I'm going to step outside my own little comfort box. And I've discovered that my very favorite way to do the stencils is um, using the sponge that I've cut into fours. I, these are little art sponges. You can Google art sponge and this readily comes up. I got them at the art store. But what I liked about these is I could cut it into fours and it's perfect. I can dip it in the paint and I can do my stencil with it and I can have a whole bunch of these because I have discovered that the stenciling works better if the paint is not super liquidy and the sponge is dry so a little bit of paint over here this is the Charvin ash violet I just happen to like this yummy lavendery kind of color with this little colorway that I've got going here I could have uh, decided to pick something with a better contrast um, but I'd rather it kind of be like an element as you're looking in and you're going, ooh, what is this or what is that? So, <gasps> ooh, see, that's perfect. Oh my goodness. See, I can already tell this stencil gonna be one of my favorite. And you can make marks like this with a paint pen. You don't have to obviously have a stencil, but I like new little ideas and art supplies and things that I'm like ooh, that's gonna be exciting oh yeah see that's super cool okay I'm loving that and you can wipe off your stencils if you want I honestly try to just get most of the color flat and just keep on using it and then I just throw my uh, little sponge into a thing of water until I can run over to the sink these clean out super well so I love how easy they clean out this is my Kuretake Gold Mica Paste. And those are the Kuretake watercolors that I'm using. So we'll just say Kuretake is my favorite art brand because I love everything they make. And we're going to add some amazing gold bits in here that I think are going to give us some super... <gasps> super yummy bling bling looky here I like the bling bling and then as we go here get a little closer we can see that gold shine in there oh yeah oh yeah it's your birthday got a little present for you <laughs> and my goal is not to cover everything completely with the exact stencil I like to just kind of go here and there just see what we can get could have gone the other way but I like that these are going the opposite way than I did with the other stencil these are going up and down instead of side to side I like that variation difference oh, so love that Ooh, super fun, super fun. Put that down into your water and just let that sit until you're ready to go wash them out. 
I would not leave them very long, but long enough for me to finish this video. And then another thing I'm kind of thinking is this might be really pretty with some fake writing in it, some asymic writing, which I really love. It's writing that looks like it might say something, but it might not say something. And I have a Copic liner that I actually got in the last art haul that we could do some fun writing with if we wanted. And I like that it's not black. So maybe you're not going to see it until you get real close and you think, oh, what is that in there? What does that say? It's super fun. And so maybe some little marks, some little things that imply we've got some writing. Maybe you're like, ooh, wonder what it says. Maybe it's a beautiful poem. Maybe it's some words of inspiration. Um, but I do like that little tiny extra touch. Okay, I'm loving this. I can't wait to peel the tea. Peeling tape, even if I'm not going edge to edge, peeling tape is by far my most exciting moment of creating because it reveals the piece. It like lets it unfold and it really turns it into that art, like fine art. Like you finally, it's, it's like, oh, we just elevated it. I like a white edge or I like to frame it where it's framed, but... It instantly looks like a beautiful piece of finished art when it has that little bit of edging to it. Look at those. Oh, these are beautiful. Look how beautiful that is. Now, if we come close, look at the yummy texture and granulation that we got in the watercolor and then the extra detail and fun that we got in the marks on top. Beautiful, a beautiful little pair. I hope you enjoyed checking out some of the new fun art things that I picked up. Some stencils from Stencil Girl, these Kuretake uh, watercolors. These, I love these. These remind me of the Japanese pigments that I have that you can make your own watercolor out of. Um, these I feel like are made with, these are, these are my Japanese pigments. Um, I feel like when I made these into watercolor, they were extremely similar to these um, in the consistency and the color and the look and the feel. Um, so I kind of knew that I was probably going to love these. And now I know I love them because those are gorgeous. All right. Hope you enjoyed our art supply haul and checking out some of the stuff. And I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.